hello friends and welcome to Miss T's Wood Turning. I'm in my little studio this morning having just returned from a trip, two week trip up to Manchester. And while I was up there I bought this uh, upgrade for my for my Record Power CL1 lathe. Um, it's 375 but it includes having the pulley modified to fit the new shaft which is slightly smaller. Record Power made these lathes with all sorts of combinations and um, this one unfortunately turns out to have a DML uh, side plate fitted which is a mounting plate actually not a side plate and we have a template here which we have already marked out and drilled the, uh, marked the holes and I will get some bolts from the lathe, fit them in the holes and then mark out the new position uh, and drill it. Unfortunately I don't have a pillar drill at the moment, it's the next, it's the next item on the list, uh, but so I have to drill it all by hand. Right, I've drilled four holes in this piece of wood to correspond with the holes in that, so I can mount that up on the bit of wood with the screws in so it's go sit right down pop that on and mark the centre punch where the new uh, holes are going to be. Now the battery's running down on the drill. Oh dear me. I should have made sure it was fully charged before I started. Well it's all four holes drilled, now I've got to actually count the sink the holes a bit so the bolt head sits inside to the sort of same level as the old screws and, or bolts I should say and then I can do before that I'll check on the on the plate that it actually fits and uh, come back. Now we I bought this Dremel back in the 90s. It's one of the very first Dremels that came on the market. Um, I've had to relieve these holes. I've tried to count sink them with a drill. The biggest drill I've got which is too small. And unfortunately we've got a, a tapered bottom so I'm trying to square it off a bit with uh, the little grinder on my Dremel.
hopefully that will now fit. may have to drill these or grind these holes a fraction deeper depends how much clearance we've got when it's actually uh, sat on the lathe but uh, the bracket now fits and pop, just pop, pop in the washers on there and tighten it up properly it's ready to go back on the lathe great stuff Right, we have the lathe, the motor back on the lathe. The recessor bolts are enough for the cover to shut without any problem. And the only thing to do now is to line up the pulleys. Um, there is a a slot cut in the shaft. Now I've had to move this pulley as far that way as I could, and this one has got to line up uh, if I can find now I've got to find the, the little slot for it you can't get my fingers in there um, I think that's it there there's a, a slot and I'm not sure if that's gonna line up exactly hmm bit of a problem you can sort of see that we have two grub screws in these pulleys. One's got a, a recess in the bottom to locate, actually locate onto the pulley itself. The slot in the shaft, I should say. So, I'm going to try and locate that. Right, I'll have to loosen that all off again and uh, come back in a sec. Right, we found the pulley. Uh, the slot in the, in the We found the slot in the shaft. Put it that way. Uh, that. If I just bring that forward a fraction, then I can. That's butting up against the end of the slot, so I can tighten that up. The same on this end as well, on the main shaft. Uh, let's make 
make sure it's nice and tight then that one screws on top to lock it in place now on the middle belt this one on this conversion that gives us between 30, or 29 rpm and 1900 rpm which is probably all I'm going to need for now until I get used to it apparently according to and that's tension as the belt lock it up jobs are good and proper job what we have to do now is plug it in and test it and here is the uh, the actual moment of truth we have a light turn that down to zero or one and we're in reverse so stop it reverse switch is on this back end where you can't see it of course uh, we have the main on and there we go dial it in as easy as that I think that belt's running pretty true I don't think I'm going to complain at that. I don't think that's a problem at all. It locks it off. Put a little thing in the top. It's about 11, 11.40 actual packs. I think that's pretty good. I like that. That is going to transform that way. Well, well, well. Job done. Right, here we are in the workshop. Well, it's uh, Monday the 1st of April. Uh, uh, sunny afternoon. Still very cold in here though. So we're experimenting with the lathe and the speeds thereof. Uh, just to play a minute. Roughing this uh, a bit of wood down. I'm simply turning a, I was thinking of turning a, another finial, but um, I've got another project in mind that I want to get on with. So it's just, a, just an experiment, basically. This starts up, it starts up and slowly builds up to full speed. Dial in a bit slow if you want. 
a little bit faster. That's uh, maximum that fully set in, which is 1900 RPM. So it's nice and quiet, it's nice and smooth, and all together I'm very happy with it. It's taking a little bit of getting used to, but uh, I've, never, I've never used the bait with a variable swing, apart from once. But that's a lesson for our local wood turning club. So there you have it. Worthwhile investment. Definitely.